Hello everyone, Namaste. Welcome back to my channel Academic Tuber. Today we are going to discuss chapter 6 from grade 9 science that is nature and environment. Before that, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe this channel and for more updates hit the bell icon. If you want more videos related to this, please like and do share these videos among your friends and don't forget to give your valuable response in comment section. Here in this unit, we are going to discuss about ecosystem, abiotic and biotic factors of ecosystem, components of grassland and pond ecosystem, food chain and food web, ecological interaction in our ecosystem. Ecology Ecology is the science of history of organism of their habitat in the native environment. Ecosystem Ecosystem is the dynamic and delicate balance existing between the living and non-living components of the environment. The ecosystem may be as small as aquarium and as big as an ocean. The term ecosystem was first proposed by a British ecologist A. G. Tansley in 1935 AD. The population of the same species forms the community and the community along with the abiotic factors constitutes an ecosystem in any place and the entire ecosystem taken together in an area of the same type of climate is called biome. Components of ecosystem Ecosystem is composed of two components they are biotic and abiotic components. Abiotic components the non-living or the physical components of the ecosystem are called its abiotic components. It includes soil, water, air, temperature, pressure, rainfall, humidity, etc. Soil Soil is one of the chief abiotic factors which forms the surface of the earth. Plants are the main source of food for all living organisms and soil is the substratum of these plants. Soil is also habitat of many organisms. Plants take minerals from soil to produce their food. Water Water is the basic need of all the living creatures on the earth. So it is also called that water is life as no life is possible without water. Water also provides habitat to millions of creatures in the world. Air Air is a mixture of different gases. Oxygen is the basic need of all living organisms. Carbon dioxide is used by plants for photosynthesis. Nitrogen is essential for growth and development of plants. Sunlight Solar energy is the ultimate source of energy of all living organisms. The chlorophyll of green plants traps sunlight which is used for photosynthesis. All the climatic factors depend upon sunlight. Biotic components All the living creatures from a unicellular microscopic organism to the gigantic multicellular organisms comes under the biotic components of the ecosystem. On the basis of their nutritional relationship, they can be classified into three main groups. They are producers, consumers, and decomposers. Producers Producers are the organisms that can prepare their own food by using the various abiotic components of the ecosystem. They are also known as autotrophs. Consumers The organisms which depend upon others for their food are called consumers. They are also known as heterotrophs. Consumers can be divided into following First one, primary consumers. They are organisms which directly feed on green plants or producers. They are herbivores. Example, protozoan, crustaceans, zooplankton, etc. In aquatic ecosystem and grasshoppers, rabbits, deer, ghosts, etc. in terrestrial ecosystem. Secondary consumers. These are the organisms which feed on primary consumers. They are also called carnivores. Example, dogs, cats, foxes, snakes, fishes, birds, etc. Tertiary consumers. These are the organisms which feed on secondary and primary consumers. They can't be preyed upon further by other organisms. So they are also called top level consumers. Example, tigers, lion, crocodiles, whale, etc. Decomposers. These are the microscopic organisms which break down complex organic compounds into simpler compounds so that simpler compounds can be reused by plants for synthesizing their food. They are called saprophytes. Example bacteria, fungi, and some other microbes. Interrelationship between the biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem. 
Producer, consumers, and decomposers are the biotic components of the ecosystem. They are interrelated with each other to form the ecosystem. The producer uses biotic or biotic components to make or synthesize their food. Herbivores or primary consumers feed on green plants, similarly carnivores feed on herbivores. When these living components die, the complex organic matter is converted into simpler form and is mixed up in the soil. This process is done by decomposers. The producers absorb these organic substances from, for their growth and development. In this way, there exists a very close relationship among the abiotic factors, producers, consumers and decomposers of the ecosystem. Autotropic organisms. Autotrophs are the organisms which can prepare their own food using the various abiotic components of the ecosystem. They are also known as producers. Heterotropic organisms. Organisms that cannot prepare produce their own food by themselves and therefore depend upon other organisms for their food are called heterotropic organisms. Heterotropic organisms have different mode of nutrition: parasitic, saprophytic, or holozoic parasitic nutrition. Organisms that completely depend upon the body of other living organisms for their food are called parasites. The mode of nutrition taken by parasites is called parasitic nutrition. The organism that is infected by parasites is called host. Examples roundworm, tapeworm, E. coli, intermovia, leeches, liver fig, bed box, lice, etc. Saprophytic nutrition. Organisms that obtain their food from dead and decaying organic matters are called saprophytic organisms or saprophytes. The mode of nutrition of saprophytic organisms is called saprophytic nutrition, example mushroom, molds, mucor, orchid, bacteria, etc. Holozoic nutrition. Those organisms that are capable of obtaining food from different kinds of animals and plants are called holozoic organisms. The mode of nutrition shown by holozoic organisms is called holozoic nutrition, example amoeba, humans, dog, cat, etc. Difference between autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs, they can synthesize their own food whereas heterotrophs, they depend upon autotrophs for their food. Autotrophs, they have chlorophyll, example organ plants, while heterotrophs, they don't have chlorophyll, example human, cow, bear, deer, etc. Types of ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem, it is again categorized into forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, and desert ecosystem. Whereas aquatic ecosystem, uh, it is categorized into pond ecosystem, sea and ocean ecosystem. Forest ecosystem. The ecosystem which is present in forest is called forest ecosystem. The different abiotic and biotic components of forest ecosystem are as follows. Abiotic components, air, water, soil, sunlight, etc. Biotic components, they are divided into subgroups. First one, producers, grass, bushes, trees, etc. Primary consumers, deer, gorals, zebras, etc. Secondary consumers, jackal, foxes, etc. Tertiary consumers, lion, tigers, etc. Decomposers, microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, molds, etc. Pond ecosystem. The ecosystem which is present in the pond is called pond ecosystem. The different abiotic and biotic components of pond ecosystem are as follows. Abiotic components, air, water, soil, sunlight, etc. Biotic components, they are divided into subgroups. Producers, hydrilla, algae, phytoplankton, etc. Primary consumers, small fish, tadpoles, dragonflies, larvae of mosquitoes, zooplanktons, like cyclops, daphnia, water beetles, mollusca, etc. Secondary consumers, frogs, crabs, big fish, etc. Tertiary consumers, snake, decomposers, microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, molds, etc. Energy circulation in an ecosystem. The energy circulates in an ecosystem in the form of food which is unidirectional. The solar energy is the main source of food in an ecosystem. It is used by green plants. The food prepared by green plants is circulated through primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, decomposers, and finally to the soil. In this process, food chain and food web is formed. Food chain.
the transfer of energy and food from one tropic level to another tropic level of an ecosystem by the process of eating and being eaten is known as food chain green plants or producers are the first tropic levels which are eaten by second tropic levels or herbivores they are again eaten by secondary consumers and the secondary consumers are eaten by tertiary consumers finally when the entire organism die they are converted into simpler organic matters by decomposers in this way all the organisms in an ecosystem are linked by a sort of food chain the arrangement of producers and consumers in an ecosystem is called tropic structure and the position occupied by an organisms in a food chain is called label as we can see in a given diagram grasshopper which is primary consumer feed on grass which are producers frog which is secondary consumer feed on grasshopper which is primary consumer snake which is tertiary consumer feed on frog which is secondary consumer and hawk which is final consumer feed on snake when the hawk dies it is decomposed by the decomposers types of food chain grazing food chain detritus food chain parasitic food chain grazing food chain in this food chain green plants or producers are the first tropic level the herbivores feeding on producers forms the second tropic level and the carnivores are the third tropic level that is producers first tropic level eaten by herbivores second tropic level which are eaten by carnivores third tropic level grass it is eaten by deer deer and deer it is eaten by tiger detritus food chain in this food chain dead and decayed organic matters are the first tropic level the primary consumers are detritivores which includes protozoans bacteria fungi etc the detritivores are eaten by secondary consumers which includes insects larva nematodes etc this food chain is shorter than the grazing food chain parasitic food chain in this food chain the food transfers from host to parasites host first tropic level parasites second tropic level food web the network of food chains interconnected with various tropic levels is called food web the food web provides the alternative pathway of food availability ecological interaction or biological interaction ecological interaction is defined as the relationship of two different or the same species that live in a specific community Interaction can be positive and negative based on the interaction either one species get benefits or can harm two there are different types of interaction some are given below one number symbiosis or mutualism second commensalism third parasitism fourth competition fifth predation symbiosis or mutualism symbiosis or mutualism a long lasting relation between organisms where both the participating organisms are benefited is called symbiotic relation it is commonly called symbiosis or mutualism here are some of the pictures showing the symbiosis or mutualism examples of symbiosis or mutualism bees fly flower to flower to collect nectar for their food here plants are also benefited as pollination occurs in them there are few bacteria found in our digestive tract which supports us in digestion they were also benefited for their survival acacia ants inhabit the bullhorn acacia the ants obtain food and shelter and the acacia depend on the ants for protection from browsing animals which the ants drive away ladybugs lives on plants eating the aphids and benefiting by getting food while the plant benefits by being rid of the aphids commensalism the interaction in which the dependent organism is more benefited but it is but it does not harm the host or animal is called commensalism here are some of the pictures showing commensalism
A spider makes web in a tree to survive safely, but the spider web does not harm the tree. Nose plants are larger plants that offer protection to seedlings from the weather and herbivores, giving them an opportunity to grow. Tree frogs use plants as protection. Golden jaggers, once they have been expelled from a pack, will try a tiger to feed on the remains of its kill. Gobby fish live on other sea animals, changing color to blend in with the host, thus gaining protection from predators. Cattle egress eat the insects style up by cattle when they are grazing. The cattle are unaffected while the birds gain food. Parasitism The organisms which completely depend upon others for food are called parasites. The organisms on which parasite depends are called host. The relation between the parasite and host organisms where the host is harmed and the parasite is benefited is called parasitism. Examples Tapeworm are segmented flat worms that attach themselves to the inside of the intestine of animals such as cow, pigs, and humans. They get food by eating the host partly digested food, depriving the host of nutrients. Fleas harm their hosts such as dogs by biting their skin, sucking their blood, and causing them to itch. Aphids are insects that eat the sap from the plants on which they live. A parasitic fungus causes witch rust and the downy mildew fungus attack fruits and vegetables. Competition Competition is the relationship between organisms that strive for the same resources in the same place. The resources might be food, water or space. There are two different types of competitions. Intraspecific competition. Intraspecific competition occurs between members of the same species. For example, two male birds of the same species might compete for males in the same area. This type of competition is a basic factor in the natural selection. It leads to the evolution of better adaptation within our species. So here in picture as well we can see two zebras fighting for the same grass and two lions they are separate, uh, fighting for a territory. So such type of competition is known as intra-specific competition because they are the member from the same species. Competition is inter-specific competition. Inter-specific competition occurs between members of different species. For example, predators of different species might compete for the same prey. Here in the picture as well, we can observe that hyena and lion, so they are of different species. So they are uh, struggling for the same prey. Predation. The interaction between animals that provide food to the predator or animals while taking the life of the prey is called predation. Here are some of the pictures showing uh, the example of predation. Examples of predation are a pride of lion attacking a large, uh, larger animals such as elephant or wildebeest, dolphin chasing and eating fish, tiger stalking and killing deer in the forest, frogs and toads extending long tongues to snatch flying insects, shark stalking and killing other fish, birds or marine and mammals. Penguins catching fish under the ice, hawks circling and catching small animals such as lizard insects. Differences between food chain and food web. Food chain is a definite, uh, definite uh, upper tropic level. In a food chain, a definite upper tropic level member consumes a lower, uh, consumes a particular lower level member. Whereas in food web, the upper tropic level consumers can consume many kinds of organisms. In food chain, food and energy from producers goes directly to the consumers in a single direction, whereas in food web, many food chains are interlinked with each other. In food chain, uh, so food chain, it can bring instability in an ecosystem, whereas food web, it helps to bring instability in an ecosystem. In food chain, animals do not have competition for food, whereas in food web, animals have competition for food. So here are a few questions from this uh, unit. Write the importance of ecosystem. There is great importance of ecosystem in maintaining environmental balance, which are 
given in the following points. It provides a natural habitat for plants and animals. A natural atmospheric balance is maintained by energy flow, gaseous cycle and water cycle as they circulate continuously. Food chain is well established which is one of the components that supports the life of other components. Ratio of carbon dioxide and oxygen always remain constant in the atmosphere. Next question. Mention the advantages of studying about food chain. The advantages of studying food chain are as follows. It shows the structure of living components of the ecosystem or biosphere. It transfers energy and materials between various living components of an ecosystem or biosphere. It provides dynamicity to the biosphere or ecosystem. What are ectoparasites and endoparasites? Those parasites that either live on the host body or attach temporarily to soft blood are called ectoparasites, example bed bugs, lice, mosquito, leeches, etc. Those parasites that live inside the host body and derive their food from them are called endoparasites, example tapeworm, hookworm, roundworm, plasmodium, etc. Next question. Describe the roles of decomposers in an ecosystem. The role of decomposers are mentioned below. First, they act as a cleansing agent of the environment by decomposing dead plants and animals. They help in recycling the nutrients. They provide space for new beings in the biosphere by decomposing the dead. They help put back the various elements into water, soil and air for the reuse of producers like crop plants. Next question. The population of producers is more than the population of consumers. Why? The producers are the organism which produce food, and the producers are consumed by the consumers in the food chain. The density or population of the producer is expected to be more as to feed the large population of the organisms at the higher tropic levels. If the population of the producers decline, then this will cause a decline in the consumer population due to lack of food. Next question, each member of each tropic level is important for an ecosystem. Why? All the members of each tropic level are closely related and responsible for the control of the number of organisms of other tropic level. The organisms of upper tropic level control the number of lower organisms of the lower tropic level. It helps to increase the number of the upper tropic level by supplying energy to them. That is the reason each member of each tropic level is important for an ecosystem. By this, we have completed notes of this unit, Nature and Environment. I hope this video was useful to you. If you like this video, please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Hope to get your suggestions regarding this video in comment section. See you on next video. Thank you.